All right, math leads here. I'm going to walk you through on how to make the three points of concurrency of a triangle. Kind of think of them as our center points of a triangle. And we're going to have three different centers our circumcenter, our in center, and our centroid. So, first thing I want to do is um, here in the GeoGebra Geo thing, our basic tools are over here. I'm going to go ahead and click more because we'll use more of these tools over here. Specifically, we'll use our angle bisector, perpendicular line. Um, perpendicular bisector and our polygon tool and we will um, also use like hide and show objects and some of these over here but I'll walk you through it as we go. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and make a triangle. I'm going to use my polygon tool. Go ahead and make a fairly large triangle in the space provided. Um, it doesn't really matter what type of triangle but just that you have three points. So you got to uh, Click on your three points and end on the point you started with, and then it constructs your polygon. So for the first one, we're going to make our circumcenter, and that deals with our perpendicular bisectors. So um, right here, I'm going to grab my perpendicular bisector tool. So I'm just going to need to select two points. So for each side, I'm going to select the two vertices, and then it will create my perpendicular bisector. So I did it for AB, do it for BC, and let's do it for CA. Okay. Notice that all these perpendicular bisects uh, have a point of concurrency. So I'm going to make that point right where they all intersect. Okay. That point, if I right click on it, I can change my settings. And instead of calling it D, I'm going to call that the circumcenter of a triangle. Okay. So the nice thing about a circumcenter of the triangle is that we can. That's a place at which we could draw a circle such that all three vertices of our triangle would intersect it. So let's go ahead and use our circle with a center tool. Click on that. So if I click on my circumcenter in any one of the three points, shouldn't matter which one I select, I will get a, the largest circle such that it goes through all three points. So what's kind of cool is if we take select our move tool, I can move my triangle around and I can see how my circumcenter will adjust. And sometimes it's in the interior, sometimes it's on the exterior, sometimes it lies right on um, one of the side lengths there. So what, next what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and make the other two centers. So I'm gonna hide some of these objects so that they're, um, we don't have too much going on with our things, our sketch here. So right here with show or hide object, I'm gonna select on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my perpendicular bisector. So one, two, three. And as long as I go ahead and select something else, I'll see that those disappear. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of move my triangle back kind of in place here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make my in center. So my in center deals with angle bisectors. So if I come down here and collect my angle bisector tool, the construction, and I want to bisect my uh, three angles of my triangle. So in order to do an angle bisector, you got to uh, select the three points that would name your triangle. So I have B, A, C. It looks like I'm going to have to go back, and it looks like I might have hid my point C. I don't want that hidden. All right, so let's try that again. So B, A, C, angle bisector of angle A. Now, angle bisector of C, I'm going to start like I would name it. So B, C, A, that's the other one. And now I need it from B, so if I name B, I would start with A. B, C. Notice we get a point of concurrency. So I'm going to go ahead and label that point, that point right there. Okay. If I right click on it, I'm going to change my setting. Not Let's not call it D, but that is the in center of our triangle. So same idea. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those angle bisectors. So I'm going to hide objects. So the, everything that's hidden is going to come back up. But if I focus on my in center, I can see my lines around it. So I select on them, select on them to get them deselected. Now they're all going to go away. So again, I should notice as I move my triangle around, that my in center is going to move around. So 
the nice part with the in center is the in center is going to be able to draw my circle inside my triangle. So the largest circle I can get. In order to do so, I need to be able to find that distance from the in center to one of my side lengths. Well, you know, distance uh, from a point to a line needs to be perpendicular. So what I'm going to come on over here is select my perpendicular line. So I'm going to select a point and a perpendicular line. So I'm going to select my in center and just any one of the sides. I'm just going to select a B for me and I get that perpendicular line. I'm going to create that point that intersects over there. And I know that that's the point at which my circle I draw inside must go through. So I get my circle tool, circle with center. I'm going to select my in center and I'm going to go ahead and select D. Notice I get a circle that is as large a circle that I can get inside that triangle. So for our third point, let's go ahead and hide some of these things that we don't need. So again, I'm looking at my in center. I don't need that perpendicular line. I really don't need that point D. So I'm going to select on that and then go back up here. So I have my two points of concurrency. And my third one is my centroid or the center of gravity. So if I had this triangle cut out and I wanted to know the exact place I could find to find that balance of that triangle. So if I was trying to bounce on the tip of a pencil or something like that, where would that place be exactly? We call that the center of gravity. So that's created with our medians. So our medians are going to be uh, the midpoints of our site segments connecting to our opposite vertices. So let's go ahead and find our midpoint. So over here in our construction tool, find our midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and find the midpoints of all three sides. So midpoint of side AB, select AB, there's my midpoint E. Midpoint of BC, B to C, there's my midpoint, C to A, there's my midpoint. So now from those midpoints, I want to use my line tool. And I'm going to make these medians. So these medians go from the middle of a side length to its opposite vertice. So the middle of the side length to the opposite vertice. Okay. Middle of the side length to the opposite vertice. Notice again we have a uh, point of concurrency where all three lines intersect. Let's go ahead and get and name that point. That point is here. I'm going to right click on it in settings. I'm going to say and rename this the centroid. Okay. So now if I use my selection move tool, well before I do that, let's go ahead and hide some of those things so we don't so it's a little bit easier to see things. So show hide objects. Again, I'm looking for things that created my centroid, my median. So I don't need that. I don't need E. I don't need F. I don't need that line. I don't need G. And I don't need that line. So now I should be able to notice that as my triangle changes, all my other points of concurrency are changing as well. Now that you have this construction done on here, go ahead and fill out the Google form and answer some of the questions um, with that by moving around your points and seeing how those three points interact with different types of triangles. Thanks a lot.